Hey guys, welcome to another segment on the Scorpion Temple. It's your girl Kiki, and I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I hope you guys are doing okay out there on this fabulous Wednesday. Oh my God, we're getting into August. This fl- this year has flew by so fast. I don't know what is going on. This is crazy. But today is a special day for me um, because I am bringing one of my dear sisters on um, here to kind of another special guest. I've been bringing all these special guests on my podcast, guys. I know y'all love it. This person, I love her to death. She is a sister from another mother, a sister from another mister, um, and all of the above. Um, She's really dear to my heart and true, and she's helped me through a lot. So I wanted to introduce, um, well, I call her Blue, you know, because she's just a snow fox full of blue, wonderful, I don't know, Disneyland full of... (laughs) Oh, no. <laughs> She's just awesome. Um, I butchered her name for the longest, and I'm so sorry, Blue. <laughs> um, but it's Jalicia. Uh-huh. Oh, so, <laughs> so welcome, um, my sister Jalicia, to the podcast today. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm Blue, Delicia, Snow, however you want to call it, I roll with it. So today um, we are going to talk about some hard topics today, but very serious topics to anybody over there. I know it reaches all around the country, all around the globe. My podcast is out there. So um, people from Ireland, England, uh North America, South America, Asia, it doesn't matter where it is. Um, They reach out and they listen to my podcast. So I think that this is a topic that needs to be touched. I have not did a podcast in so long. And I know that this queen right here will be able to help me um, talk about some things. Um, Viewer discretion is advised. So I'm just saying, um, you know, um, we talk about anything and everything, no censor, Um, on the podcast, of course. But I did want to talk about two things. Um, Well, I wanted to ask the question to you guys. It's an open-ended question. um, And it's, have you ever dealt with a narcissist? And have you ever dealt with a manipulator? Do you know somebody that manipulates? Do you know somebody that has narcissistic behaviors? Um. I know there's a lot of people out there that have gone through this and don't know where to turn or how to look or what to do. Um, and it's very, it's a very hard topic, um, to talk about, but I believe that everybody should be able to put in their input. I believe everybody should have their opinions heard and, that's why I brought this queen on here because she has so many valid points, so many, so much knowledge on this type of thing. Um, and I do too. So, um, and she's not like a therapist or anything like that. She has no kind of personal, you know, I'm, I guess she's not, she's not in the profession, but she does have some relative information that she can share um, with you guys. So that way we can try to help everybody get out of the shit. <laughs> Um, so, um, one thing that some people don't know is that uh, what a narcissist is, um, and a narcissist is basically a personality disorder. My God, I didn't, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that at all. Like, I didn't know that that was that. Um, but one of several type of personality disorders, um, it's a mental condition in which people have an inflated sense of their own importance. Um, they have a deep need for excessive attention and admiration. Just they have troubled relationships because of this and also a lack of empathy for, er- for others. So they really don't care what anybody else thinks or is going through they just worry about themselves and they're very controlling very controlling um they might not know it they might it might not seem like it's harmful for them to say it or do it but 
they do it and they don't even notice when they're doing it. Um, and it's kind of hard to tell a narcissist that they're doing narcissistic behaviors or just out of control, whatever, because then they're going to end up turning it around and flipping on on you. That's when we get to the manipulation. Um, those two kind of run in together, you know, and a manipulator for you guys that don't know what it is out there. Um, they are experts in playing mind games. They will turn a lot of stuff around and make it seem like it's you and only you. And you know, in the back of your mind, like, I know this is true. I know this is what's going on. No, this is right. No, am I really? And then you start second guessing yourself. You start thinking about, okay, am I really wrong? Or is, is it really, wait a minute, hold on. And you start thinking about some stuff. Um, they have their best interests in mind, not yours. Um, you know, that, that, I don't know. That's just self-explanatory. And they are emotional bullies and control freaks. Um, they are irresponsible and inconsistent. They blame you for their behaviors. They are wolves in sheep's, cl in sheep's clothing. I love that. They are wolves in sheep's, in sheep's clothing. Don't forget That's that wild. people will turn your family and friends against you if they give them a chance. Wow. And they have no desire in having um, authentic, real conversations. They are afraid of vulnerability. Um, and, and that's just, you have to prepare yourself mentally and physically for being with a manipulator or being around somebody that manipulates and you have to be strong. But there are some points where if you have somebody that's narcissistic and there's a manipulator as well, those two together can be powerful against the mind. And you start second guessing yourself and then you start going through depression states and you start second guessing yourself and then thinking it's all you. And then this person just gets to go off and just be lollygagging and highly doing whatever they want to do while you're sitting here, just like your mind is just blank. You're confused. You're like, hold on, wait a minute. Where did this start? And you start beating yourself up over it because you're thinking like, maybe I am, dang, maybe I am doing all this stuff. And maybe I, wait a hold on. And you got to just literally stand your ground and know that what you say is what you mean and what you mean is what you say and stand on your word. Know that, yes, this person is going to say, let's say, for example, and then after that, I'm going to let Blue speak her mind. Uh, let's just say, um, oh, for example, you, you misplaced the chair. I don't know. I'm just going to say something. I'm looking at a chair right now. Let's say you just misplaced the chair and you're like, say it's your sister. That's the manipulator. You're like, Hey sis, did, did, do you know where the chair went? Girl, you know, you moved that chair and I don't know why you over here talking about that. And you always moving stuff. And then you can't remember what you did. And I wasn't, wait a minute. I was just asking a hold on. I was just asking a question like, no, I, I would. Now you saying that I moved the chair, you know, all it's, it's, it goes with all of that. You just simply ask the question and they just flipped it around and changed it to you. You just ask them a question or, Hey, what's this text message? Um, Bobby sent you a text message. Who's Bobby. So now you're checking my phone. Now you're doing this. Why I got to tell you who Bobby is. Who's Susie. Why is Susie calling you? It's, 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 it, Oh, <laughs> It's, it's <laughs> oh. it's it's a lot it's a whew, it's a lot it's it's a lot it's a lot to take in mentally and emotionally it's mentally and emotionally draining and i know blue can throw her input in there what do you think blue what do you think about these two topics As someone who has to deal, had to deal with that for a very long time, um, through family, through personal experience, 
it's tough. It is very tough. Always second guessing yourself, even when you come in, go into a healthy relationship. You're always you end up always apologizing, whether or not you're at fault and you know you're not at fault, and they explain you're not at fault. But those these relationships, whether it's with a significant other, a sibling, they're toxic. That's all they are. Narcissistic people, I've seen and learned, do not care whether you're hurt, you're crying out, only if they get that instant gratification that helps themselves. They don't care about anybody. Just the next big conquest. Narcissist, the word narcissist came from the Greek mythology, Narciss. He was narcissist. He was a very handsome, beautiful, everyone, Erdonis, if you want to go like that. And he cared nothing about himself until one day he came across a pond. And he he was like, before he came across this pond, he was like, I'm going to marry, only marry a person who matches my beauty, my stature, everything. Well, when he came across the pond, he saw himself and he was he fell in love with himself he was there hours upon hours didn't even move from that spot but just stare at it because he was in love with himself that much until the god took pity on him and turned him into the narcissistic flower that we now know of today but basically is what i'm trying to say from that is no one cares i mean a narcissist doesn't care about anyone no one. It's hardwired in their mind that they are the best, that it is, they do no wrong, and that even when you present them evidence that shows the contradictory, they can manipulate it to the point where you're questioning whether or not you have the right information. Yes. And it's really hard to get away from that. Trust me, it is. But, and it's even worse, it's not bad if you have, like, a people in the background that will help you, but it's worse if you're all alone and you don't know where to go because narcissists, when they want something and they don't want in input to anyone, they will literally completely cut you off from everybody, completely make you question whether or not they're a true friend or they're a true sibling or they're a true mother or anything. They will completely cut you off to the point where you are alone and you don't know where to go. But there, there are places, help centers, therapy, everything is at your disposal. Even nowadays, it's more easier than it was back in the 90s or the early 2000s, it's literally a click of your finger, you can find it. But let, let me tell you now, here and now, you will always be able to find something. You do not have to be in that situation. Do not, it may feel like it's a hopeless situation, but it's not. Even after you get out, still, you gotta help yourself, help whoever, make sure you grow because even when you think that you got everything, that you're away from that situation, nothing can do you wrong, a simple one little tick can put you right back in that situation again. It is always a growing process. Something can always knock you back off your ground, but you have to keep building yourself back up each and every time. That's all you have to do. And a manipulator they have a way of changing things around to where when you feel like you're strong enough to move forward and do what you need to do to get yourself together, it's like a hunch that they get. I'm not sure what it is, but it's like a hunch that they get and they can send you a message or write you a letter or give you a call or uh, I don't, I don't know what it, what it could be. It could be anything. And 
something there in that message or in that letter or in that phone call or uh, in that they might even send you a song uh, or whatever. And you listen to it and you're like, oh, my God, like it makes you start thinking back again. Oh, my God, like what happened? Like now you're going back to from strong building, building your strength up and moving forward with what you need to do. Back to back to square one where you feel alone and you feel sad and you're second guessing yourself and you and you're just confused and you're distraught and you're, you know, running around like a chicken with your head cut off, trying to figure out what you can do to make everything better and fix everything. And this and then a third, not knowing that that's exactly what they just did. They brought you from your ultimate high, which you were right there girl, boy, I got to get it. I'm back on my stuff. I'm, I'm this, I'm that. And then they they can send you an easy message saying, let's say, oh my gosh, I got hurt. Oh my gosh. Are you okay? Yeah, no, no. I mean, yes, I, I'm okay. You know, this and then the third, now you're focusing all your energy on them and what's going on with them. And now you stop building yourself because now you're worried about what's going on with them and what, are they okay? Are they eating? Are they well? Are they did this and that and the third? And then they get you right back where they want you or, or let's let, let me put a good example. Okay. I had a friend that she was going through some out. She was going through some stuff and she just got back to her high peak and her uh, boyfriend texted her and was like, Hey, I want to take you out. And you're like, she's like, Oh my gosh, really? Where? I want to take you to the movies. Just bear with me. I'm going to take you to the movies. Just be ready. And I'm going to take you to the movies. Okay. Okay. What time do you need me to be ready? I need you to be ready by seven o'clock. Okay. Seven o'clock. I'll be ready. So she sits there and waits seven o'clock comes around gets a text message. Oh, I'm sorry. Something came up, but tomorrow I'm going to take you tomorrow. I'm going to take you. And you're just like in her head, she's thinking, Oh my God, I sit here the whole entire day waiting for you. And then boom, something comes up. How does that come up? And then the next day rolls around and she does the same thing and boom, something comes up. She's waiting on him two days, three days, four days, five days, and the continuous promises that is not kept. And now from her ultimate high of building herself and being able to walk with her head high and strive and and move the way she wants to move and feel free and just relax and be able to be herself again. Now she's back at her low. It's that quick that somebody can turn around and be a narcissist and be a manipulator all at the same time. You manipulated the situation. Oh, well, you know what? Um, I've been waiting on you since, you know, since Tuesday, what happened? You know that I, I have to go do this for us. And you know that I have to do this for my mom. And you know, I told you that I got you. Just be patient. Why are you always doing that? Now you just manipulated the situation. Now she's going back thinking that she's the one that's not being patient enough to be able to wait for this person to take her out to the movies, take her out to Six Flags. I don't know. Go down the street and get a beer together, whatever the case may be. Now she's back to her ultimate low. People don't understand how hard it is dealing with those two types of people. And those two types of people don't even, it might not even be two types of people. It might be one person with those two types of disorders. It's very hard to deal with that type of stuff, especially when you're so deep in emotional entrapment. Let me just say that in emotional entrapment that you feel like you can't escape. You've been to therapists, you've talked to people, you've done this, you've done that. And it's still embedded in your head. It's still there. And you keep holding on. Which goes back to what I said. All it takes is a simple switch. Even when you're at your highest high, one little knock can knock you right back down. Because that's basically... That's unfortunately how life goes. You're always going to, I hate to say it, but you'll always find that one manipulative person in your life. Excuse me. 
you'll always find that one minute for a person, whether it be just a recent stranger who becomes closer to you, your family, or hell, just a passerby who yeah. manipulate, just manipulates the situation to get what they want right then and there. But the, what you what you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is if you to learn to read the signs. That's what ha would, would what help you move on. Is learn to read the signs. If you see someone that's be that's a constant manipulator, try to distance yourself from them. If there's something holding you back to the point where you cannot leave, just distance yourself. But if they once you start distancing yourself, it's easier to break off. You can't just hardcore break off. Some people, it, it needs to come to that. But for most people, distancing, then breaking off. But like if you're in a situation where mentally abused, you're being mentally, physically, sexually abused, that's where you completely, you try to, your hardest to completely break off right then and there. Because typically when that happens, the next level is right, right there. And that is to be murder. Because yeah. those who do all those have you where they are completely possessive. They don't care who has you. If they can't have you, no one can. Yeah. That's where you need to break off. But if they're just being um, manipulative, narcissistic, and stuff like that, they haven't laid a hand on you or nothing, start distancing yourself. Because then it can go to that next level where they become physically and sexually abusive. You don't want that either. So if you start distancing yourself now, it's easier to leave quietly where they don't know. But if you're in that situation where you're completely trapped, pack up your clothes tonight. Go to the nearest safe house that you can find. Tell them as much as you can. Even if you end up having to go back the next day, let them know every information you can and to help them. They can do as much as they can, but they can only do it if you let them. You can lead a horse to a water, but you can't force them to drink. Make them drink. So that's that's how I feel about it. Do as much as you can to get yourselves out of the situation to where you can live again, not just survive. Because that's what most y'all are doing, you're surviving. You need to live, live for yourself. Live if you have kids, live for your kids. Hell, if you're going to have kids and you have, but you have people that are near, live for them. Don't survive anymore. Live. And I did want to say, because Blue did bring up a point of the, you know, the signs and the symptoms and stuff like that of a narcissist. And um, once <clears throat> a couple of signs that they do have is they have an, an an aggravated sense of importance. They have a sense of entitlement or required constant excessive admiration. They expect to be recognized for superior, even without uh, achievements that warrant um, their uh, aggravated achievements and um, uh, talents. They are preoccupied with fantasies about success, power, brilliance, beauty, or the perfect mate. Um, they believe they are superior and can only associate with equal special people, equally special people. Um, they monopolize conversations and belittle or lock down on people they perceive as inferior. They expect special favors and unquestioning compl uh, complices I'm sorry, compliance with their expectations. They take advantage of others to get what they want. And she just said that. Um, they have an inability and or unwillingness to recognize the needs and feelings of others. They behave in an uh, arrogant and uh, an arrogant manner, coming across as conceited, um, and they insist on having the best of everything. For instance, like the best car, the best office, the best job, the best, it, 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 it sky's the limit. 
um, I, I, I do want to talk uh, again about this manipulation thing. Some people don't know the real definition of like being a manipulator or if it even you might ask yourself, am I, am I a manipulator or am I with somebody or know somebody that is a manipulator? Um, manipulators, they suddenly express their needs and desires or true feelings. They seek out the vulnerabilities in others in order to take advantage of them for their own benefits and their true motives. Um, they'll like, let's say that they lied about, um, taking $20 out the bank. You, you're lied. You lied. You took that $20 out that bank. And you know it. You did that. Why are you sitting here lying to your mom and your dad and your grandma and your grandpa and your uncle and your sister saying that I did that when you know you did that? That that's that's manipulation. And then manipulators, they don't when you ask them a question, let's say that you caught them in a lie and you ask them a question about this lie. They're not going to base the question on the lie on that on the they're not going to base the answer on the question you just asked. They're going to base the question on another question. They're going to say, like, if you say, hey, Jimmy, did you skip school today? Well, didn't you skip school last week? Did, why did you skip school last week? What the, it's, 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 They're not going to answer the question directly. I'm not even talking about me. I'm talking about you. They're going to skip way over what you just asked them and go straight to something that happened 15 weeks ago or yesterday or last month or whatever the case may be. They're not going to stick to the right, to the question that's being answered or the statement that's being held at that point. Anything to keep the sunlight off them, they're going to turn it and make it about you or the other person. And you have to I catch those things. I would like to point out one thing about a manipulator that whether it's intentional manipulation or not, a manipulator will always categorize and file any incident for later use. Whether or not it's um, for their benefit or not, almost always going to be for their benefit. But anything that you have on you just like she said, they will use every bit of information to keep it off of them. So let's say, let's do a relationship for all types of persons. Let's say in the beginning of a relationship, you were talking to another person because you didn't know you were going to be fully committed. Not Nothing more just talking, but then you started falling harder for that person. That the other person that you're with, the current one. Well, years down the line, you cut, you catch them cheating. You catch them cheating, hardcore, in the bed with the person with them. They'll turn that situation back on you. Oh, I only cheated because you you were talking to this person years and years ago. I can never trust you, so I'm going to cheat every chance I get. You see where I'm going? Year, that didn't happen for years. You were faithful from that moment on that you committed yourself to them. I'm not saying you were in the right. You probably weren't. But their whole, they like to hold every little information above you, whether or not you did right or you did wrong. But if it gets them off um, the punishment, they'll use it against you. Because now you're back in that headspace well, he's right. She's right. I did start talking to this other person while I was with them. So I'll give them another chance. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is how many chances are you willing to give them? Because they're going to keep using that one instance you did as their gateway gate. And that's not right at all. Yeah, and then it says, um, if you try to have an open and honest conversation about moments when you feel hurt or invalidated, you will be shut down with allegations 
that you have been too sensitive, insecure, or overreacting. They may pretend to be sweet and open-minded to your face. And while they might not hurt you directly, they will find some way of undermining or belittling you. So while you're telling this person, you know, when you yelled at me yesterday, it kind of hurt me. Well, last week you yelled at me. So how am I supposed to feel about that? It's not all about you. I'm hurt too. You hurt me when you ran over my foot the other day. Well, it was an accident, but you hurt me. <clears throat> or they can be like, <laughs> they can, oh my God, they can be like, Well, you're, you're doing this and doing that. What, what about me? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm here for you. I'm, I love you. I'm here for you or, you know, whatever the case may be in that situation, it didn't even have to be in a relationship and they turn it around and they go, well, you know what? I'm the one that's been going through stress and I've been the one that's been working 99 hours a week and you just sit here and you don't do anything. And, and then I come home and I cook and I clean and I, and I, and I mop the floor and I take out the trash and I make sure you're okay. And what do you do? You don't even do this. You don't even do that. And then you're just like, wait a minute, hold on. Like I that that's, not what I meant. Like I was just saying, well, that I'm always on my feet. I'm busting my ass 24 days a week. This there's no 24 days in a week, seven days a week and this and that and the third. And you just sit here and don't do nothing. And then you have a nerve to come and complain to me about this, 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 this. I'm stressed. What about me? I'm hurt. My father just died. Da, 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 da. Oh, Jesus Christ. I can't even... <laughs> Don't forget um, manipulators, controllers, narcissistic people. When I remember how I said they like to separate. If you start, let's let's do another scenario. Let's say you met this person, whether or not you're gay, lesbian, bisexual, demisexual, anyway. You met your your partner. You had that's you had the more money income coming in. Oh yeah. You had a bit higher income, but the manipulator wanted wanted you for themselves, wanted you to be broken, no way to go. They'll slowly start saying, well, how about you start taking a week off? Maybe, how about you just start staying home, relaxing? You don't work. You don't need to work. I got it. I'll bring in the bacon. Then months down the line, the switch slips. Why are you always on your butt? You never do this. You never do that. I'm always working. But baby, I, no, no, baby. You agreed to do, you wanted to be home. So you do this. You can, you listen to me. You don't get to go out. I'll go out. You'll stay home. You do this to the point where in your mind, you're like, he's right. I agreed to stay home. I agreed to do this. She told me, it would work better if I stay home while she gets the money. It, those are the signs you want to look for when you're in a relationship. Are they slowly um, factoring you off away from people to the point where any if you could try to save money, you couldn't because all the money only comes from them. You're yeah. back in that place. Now, let's say you had kids with that. You're stuck because you want to stay with um, them because they're the father, they're the mother of your children. They're the ones who will be able to take care of them because you can't because you're home. That's when you're like, I need to reach out. Even if it's to someone I don't know, you got to reach out because you're at that place where now you have children involved. And yes, they're the breadwinner, but you are the one taking care of the kids. You're the one nurturing them. And I say this again, it doesn't matter if you're a man, it doesn't matter if you're a woman. You're the one, if you're the one nurturing and taking care and all they hear and see is anger and frustration. 
hell, they could hide that frustration towards your kids and make it seem like you're always in the wrong and it can turn the kids against you. I've seen it every which way possible. And what you need to do, even if it has to, you have to just get away. Take the kids and get away. Do not leave those kids in that situation because it, that's my main focus right there. Do never leave the kids in that situation if you have to leave yourself because the narcissist will turn to them. The anger will turn to them. And those kids didn't do nothing. Those kids are innocent. I've seen it where nar narcissists got to one of my closest friends and she just packed up everything and left left the little ones with their father. And the father was so angry because he was so narcissistic because he like, this, this bitch got away. So he turned his anger and frustration to the little ones. And it got to the point where the youngest was killed through the frustration. I wow. hate the statements, I hate the that's in there, but y'all need to know how bad it can get. The little one was murdered. He's now... He's locked up. The other one's in foster care. But it can get that bad. And it can also get bad to where manipulators can change your whole mindset and basically hypnotize you to think that you're the problem to where you feel like you can't escape. You feel like you can't escape yourself. You feel like you can't escape the situation. You feel like you can't escape life. <laughs> And so I've seen a couple of videos on Lifetime <clears throat> where they've gotten so worked up with people constantly telling them what they're doing wrong. And, and they know in the back of their mind that they're, they're, they're not doing wrong. But then they started second guessing their self and they're like, maybe I am doing wrong. Maybe I am living wrong. Maybe I am upsetting people. I'm tired of upsetting people. I'm tired of upsetting myself. I'm tired of fucking up. I'm tired of doing this. And they end up killing themselves because they feel like there's no way else to deal with the situation. You've went to God, you've went to counselors, you went to your friends, you went to their friends, you went to this person and told them how you feel to seek guidance. And they all turned you away or all pointed the fingers at you because of this one person that said that you were the problem. And in your mind, in the back of your head, in your soul, in your heart, you think that you are the problem. When action, in actuality, you are not the problem. It's just the hypnosis that you've been going through of this person and everybody else that's manipulating the situation or you or whatever has told you that you are the problem and you are the reason why these things are happening and you, 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 you. And it's really them. And then so you're like, if it's just me, then why do I need to be here? Why do I need to be here? Why do I need to? No, everybody's turned my back. I've shut everybody off because of this person. Everybody else makes them feel uncomfortable. Everybody else that does, does, they can't trust, they can't rely on, they're not dependable. This and that and the third because of me. I've lost so many fan, friend, friends. I've lost so I've lost so many kids. I've lost so much, so many jobs. I've lost so much self-confidence and self-worth and self-esteem and self-everything that you just lose yourself within yourself. And then you just figure to end it. That's not the right way to do it. Those thoughts in your head are the manipulation that you've been through. And manipulation, I want to say this, is not okay. Being manipulated is not okay. Being a manipulator is not okay. Even though you might not think that you're a manipulator, the words that you say to people, they do hurt. I know that the saying when I was growing up as a kid, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt. Words do hurt. Sticks and stones do break your bones, but words do hurt. And if you can't express how you're feeling to the person that you love or the person that you care about or your family or your friends because they're being judgmental or they are manipulating the situation to turn it around, making you seem like you're crazy and you're psycho and you're just loopy, you're just loopy and you're going through some stuff and that you've talked to the counselors and they're, they're the people that write everything down and be like, how do you feel about that? And you tell them how you feel about that and they prescribe you a pill. 
and say, take this every day at seven o'clock in the morning. Don't miss. And the pills are not working and the conversations are not working. And you've seeked out and you've reached your hand for somebody to grab it on the other end and they haven't been able to grab it on the other end. Please seek help. It's not okay. It's not Being a manipulator is not okay. Manipulating somebody is not okay. It's not okay at all. It, it hurts. It hurts, especially when you know that you're not doing those things that they're telling you you are doing. But then when you are talked to like that for so long and constantly on a daily basis, regardless of how it is, you start your brain starts training itself to think like that. Then you blame yourself for everything and it's not your fault. So please, whatever help that you have to get, get it. There should be at least two or three people, at least, that you can reach your hand out and talk to and they will not judge you. They will not talk bad about you. They will not go to the source that you're, whatever is going on and tell them about it. Because how can you trust somebody to talk to them if they're going back to the person that you're talking about or whatever the case may be and tell them everything you just told them. Now you can't trust that person because you want to be able to vent openly without being judged, without being ridiculed and all of that stuff. And you just want to just vent. You don't want to talk bad about this person. You're just like, Hey, Oh my God, I can't believe Jimmy skipped school and he, and he went out with Rachel and, and then, you know, I don't understand what's going on. And then they go to Jimmy and they're like, you know, Susie was talking about you earlier today. Like she doesn't understand why you went out with Rachel. Like, that's crazy. I don't understand what's wrong with her. Then Rachel comes back and be like, you was talking about me. Are you serious? Now you can't even trust, trust the person that you told it to because they went back and went through this whole triangle and it got back to you. And nine times out of 10, when it gets back to the person after it done went through all the chains of the telephone service, it's, it's nine times out of 10, not the, what exactly what you said. We used to play telephone in school all the time. And, and we would sit in a circle, at least five or six of us and say some stuff. And every time it got back to the original person, it never was the right thing that it never was the same thing that they said from before. Everybody then added an extra piece of something in there. So you have to find somebody that you trust, that you can just vent with. It doesn't matter if it's good, bad, ugly, happy, sad. It doesn't matter that you can talk to and get it off your chest. Then let it go. You got it off your chest. You're okay now. Now move forward. But if you have that person that you talk to and they don't keep it in, or at least guide you to where you know where to go from after you tell after you tell them what's going on, at least give you some guidance and give you some kind of strength to be able to be like, okay, I got this. And not belittle you some more. You need to find somebody else that's your friend or somebody else that you can confide in. Cause now I can tell you this from, from experienced therapists. You can't tell a therapist every single thing. If you tell a therapist that you're going to, you feel like killing Johnny, Johnny because he uh, killed your cat, she's going to go to the, to the p police and be like, I think uh, Susie's going to kill herself. Like, because that's her profession. She has to do that. That's law. But if you go to, you know, Kelly and tell her, oh my God, I feel like killing blah, blah, blah. And it's just because that's how you feel at that moment. And Kelly's like, okay, calm down. You're not going to kill anybody, girl. You're crazy. Calm down. It's okay. Tell me what happened. And then you start telling them what happened. And then they're like, oh, that's not it. Come on now. We're going to do this. Let's go shopping. Let's do this. And then they get your mind off of it. Now you're not even thinking about killing the cat or killing whatever I just said. You need, you need that person that you can confide in, that you trust in, that, that you can seek help with. And it might not always be somebody that you have to pay $60 an hour just to talk to. But there's always that one person out there that you can trust that won't judge you, that won't belittle you, that won't make you feel worthless because you're already at that point where you feel worthless. So why do you need to talk to somebody else that's going to make you feel even lower? I don't even think you can get lower than lower.
this is a, a very, very touchy topic. Mm-hmm. I like to take some things seriously and I like to have jokes and stuff like that on some podcasts, but I feel like this needs to be nationwide and it needs to be broadcasted because some people don't know what narcissistic behaviors are and they don't know what manipulators do. And they don't even know if they're manipulating people. And it's good to know if you're manipulating people so you can stop doing it. shape form or fashion is manipulation right because if your shoe if the shoe was on the other foot and you were out there manipulating people and then they turned the tables and the people that you manipulated you stepped inside their body for a day and got the same treatment that you've been giving them but you're in their body you wouldn't like it it would make you look at life and that person totally different and treat them right but we can't do that we can't just sink inside people's bodies and see how they feel about the situation. I bet if we could, we'd get a lot of better understanding of what's going on and how that person really feels and what they're scared to talk about, but they really wanna get it off their chest, but they can't because they're scared of the outcome of some stuff. But just know the signs. Like we don't always know the signs. We don't know always know what to look for in a liar and a manipulator and especially an obituary liar, somebody that just makes up stuff just for the heck of it. You know, if we (laughs) obituary liar, um, I I looked at the definition of an obituary liar and it, it, it's, it, 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 for layman's terms, Bill lied just for lying's sake. Like, you don't even have to give them a reason. They'll just call you and say, oh, my dog just died. I can't come over. You didn't even have to call them or nothing to problem. But they'll, they just called you to tell you a whole lie. Because the next time you see them, you're like, I thought you said your dog died because their dog is barking right at you. Like, exactly. Oh, no, that's another dog. I just got it from the animal shelter. Wait a minute. Huh? Yeah, or somebody says, oh, they stole my car, and I had to go beat two guys up to go get it. And 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 then I um, and then the police were called, and I was put in handcuffs because I beat the two guys up, and they gave me a, uh, a black eye, but then you see them tomorrow, and there's no black eye. Well, how, what happened to your black eye? Oh, I put ice on it, and I put meat on it, and it cleared up in a day. What? Bruises don't ever clear up in a day, just for FYI. You basically just sit on a throne of lies. You conjure up stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm a um, a school teacher. And you're really a tutor. Or, oh, yeah, I'm a, um, shoot, you know, I'm a police officer. And you're a security guard. Or, oh, my favorite, I'm the CEO when you're just a janitor. Yes. Or I'm a regional uh, general manager and you're just a manager. So uh, yeah, or you might even be a team lead. It might not even be that. You might not even be a, a, a regional general manager. You might be just a team lead, but you see higher, higher stuff in there, higher stuff in there, but you just say, I'm that. That's what I am. Reflect being a regional general manager, they reflect being a a team lead, or worse, a crew mem- a crewmate, a and crewmate, I'm a manager. Yeah, or you say I'm the <laughs> owner of Dollar Tree. I own Dollar Tree down on Fifth. I own Dollar Tree down on Fifth, and you're really hey, the stock person. Dollar Tree down on Fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you had to do my job. I had to. I had to make it funny. <laughs> I worked at Dollar Tree too, so, and I was just a stock person. Like, no, I was actually the 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 assistant general, assistant manager. But still, uh, you just sit on a throne of lies. You just lie for no reason. Oh yeah, I got shot in the foot, and it was with a BB gun. <laughs> so it's just you know whatever the case may be. So I um, say from the manipulators. If we had to have a favorite, are the ones that try to spend what they don't have. Yeah. So 
for the ones that get caught the quickest because they're spending more than they can produce. Like, if you go out in this five star restaurant, they spend thousands of dollars. But then weeks after they're asking for money, I thought you had the money to spend for this. Yes. Yeah. Why well, to pay some stuff and start. some unexpected bills came in and, and I didn't know it. They just hit the mail just last week and um I didn't even know it. So now I'm out of money because I had to hurry up and pay those before they were just past due. What bills did you pay? You stay with your mom. Oh well, I had to pay for the trash and the water and the sewage and my phone and and then um, light bill and all that stuff. And then you go to the mom and she's like, no, I paid all that. All he did was pay for his cell phone bill. What happened? <laughs> it's like, to, those are the easiest ones to spot because they leave paper doors. Yeah. I hate to be that type of person. I'm not saying go through everyone's, your significant other, your partners, your mother, your fathers, your sisters, stuff. But start documenting inconsistencies. Like, some, if it, if you notice this is a pattern, start documenting it. Like, if they say one line, document it. Write it down. Record it. Let them know you're recording, by the way, because it's, in some states, it is illegal to record without people's permission. But just stuff, simple things. Write it down if you have to, if you can't record. Just so you have proof. Keep all your messages if they're messaging you these lies. Everything yeah. means everything. And that is what I want y'all to realize. Because even when a imposter, I mean an imposter, I'm sorry, I was watching something, and a narcissist <laughs> person is faced with the truth, they try to back away from it. But they can't, not even the most, the best liar can back away from undeniable proof when there's so much overwhelming proof. Yeah. One or little two incidents, quick hands in a hurry can turn that around on you. But when you have piles and piles of all their inconsistencies, all their lies with the truth, they can't do nothing but admit to the truth. Some people might try to keep lying to their dying breath, but for the most part, most will cave. And if you are a habitual liar, you know somebody that's an habitual liar, you have to like call them out on it. And, and not in a bad way. I wouldn't say be, be mean about it, but just kind of let them know that you take note of that and you recognize that. Because if you are an obituary liar and you know that you're just lying about the shoes that you wear and the clothes that you wear and the and the this like you're saying you wear polo and and Nipsey Hussle and 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 Dior and all this other stuff, but you're actually playing wearing like Dollar Tree stuff. I keep going to Dollar Tree. I don't know. I'm, I need to go to Dollar Tree. I guess, um, you know, because Dollar Tree has clothes in there and they're they're okay clothes. Like whatever you shop at the Dollar Tree, I don't give a shit. Yes, on you. That's say look, live better, save money. You know what I'm saying? Um, I will also and, do this. Um, some people are willing to change. Not all liars or narcissistic people are set in their ways. Now, do I say forgive and forget when they say that claim may change? No. I say you can forgive. I say if, if you want to more pass it and keep them in your lives if they actually did change. However, just like I said, with their traits breaking you down, a simple thing can bring them back to where they're bad. So always, always be on guard with them. You can probably have them in their life. They can change and nothing else happens. But it, all it takes is just like I said, one twist, one turn, and you're back in that same situation you were before. Yeah. But that's not saying don't give everyone a chance. Don't give them a second chance if they fuck up. It's just saying keep your perspective going. Don't wholeheartedly trust them like you did before. Don't give them 
your all like you did before. Give them a part of you. Learn from it. But don't drown yourself in. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, back to, you know, habitual liar thing. If you're doing a lot of lying and, and consistently lying, when something does really happen, you got to realize if you cry wolf too much, nobody's going to really believe you if something really happens. I know we all in all in America, North America, South America, all around the world, we tell some kind of type of lie. And it, for whatever reason it is, a little white lie or big lie, it doesn't matter. It, we tell lies. We're all human. Um, but to the point where you're lying every single day or every single minute to the point where, let's say, you actually get in a car accident. And two weeks ago, you kept saying you got in a car accident. And now it's really bad. And you call everybody and say, hey, I need help. I got in a car accident. My leg is bleeding, blah, blah, blah. I, the paramedics are here and they're just like, I'll stop playing. You said that two weeks ago. I'll talk to you later. And they hang up. But you really need help. You really want them to be there. Just watch what you say and how you say it and who you tell it to. Because the lies can get caught up. And once they get caught up, they're going to blow up. And you never know how that situation is going to turn out. So, you know, the truth will set you free. Whether you told 50 lies within the months that we've been in 2021 and today you hear this, this podcast and you're like, man, I need to call somebody and tell them this is what I lied about and, and this and this and this and make this straight because I, I, I hear this podcast, I understand it, and I'm not trying to go down that route. Like I want people to believe me if something really does happen or if something is going on. Then do that. Apologize. Well, the shadows will always come into the light. Yes. And it's a model I've lived by, and that's a model I want y'all to take away from this. Any lies will always come full to fruition. Yeah. Every single lie will come out. And you, whether it was small white lies or a huge big lie, like, I'm not married, I'm, and you are whole card married to another person. Yeah. That will come out. We're in that day and age, all it takes is a single look on your Facebook, look on your Twitter, look on your Snapchat. Anything you have will can be brought back out. The paper trail is always there. I love how people like to use, oh, well, if I delete it, no one wanna no. That paper we're in that day and age, anything can be found. Something yes. from years and years ago that you didn't think would be can be found. Yes. Our documents, our, our, our devices save so much, save so much, and we just don't know about it, save so much. And then it doesn't even have to be a device. If you're telling somebody that you're not married and you're really married, you can li literally run into the, to the store, run into, in, be in the store with a significant other, and, and you run into all of them, and you're like, I thought, hey, I thought you weren't married. Who is this? Oh, I'm his wife, Judy. What the? You know, so it... It, it doesn't even have to be social media. It could be in person. It could be anywhere. You can meet a family member and they say, you know, something or something like that or whatever. A phone call, a slip up. So you're, you're not, not going to be able, able to trace your tracks with every single freaking lie. It's going to catch up at some point. Mm -hmm. But I did want to thank you guys for listening to this podcast blue you've been awesome an awesome guest today we had an emotional podcast guys and i'm so sorry if i put up the waterworks and start them flowing that was not my intention but i did have to put this message out there because you know i've had so many people come to me and ask me this question i'm just like i don't know like what's going on but i love to put it on the podcast so that way you can reach out to the world so i can help somebody else and also, you know, empower anybody else that's out there listening to this and does not know where they could go or how they can get help or what to do. Um, send to hear your feedback, feedback on this on this podcast today. Any kind of suggest uh, suggestions or topics that you want us to talk about? If Blue is willing also, to let me. And also, I will say this before we head on out: if you legit desperately need help. 
look up your closest, as I, I say it once, I'll say it again, look up your closest, nearest shelter to get away. We're, I'm not saying this just to be funny. I'm saying this to save a life. Leave. Do not keep yourself in this situation. Get out. Yes. And there is hotlines um, out there. I know one thing about the domestic violence um, I learned um, on a video. Um, and if you can't, if you're in a domestic violence situation and you cannot get out or you do not know where to start to get out, what I want you to do is I want you to take your fingers, put out five fingers right now if you're listening to this podcast. I want you to take the thumb and put it on the middle of the hand. And I want you to leave these four fingers up. This is the sign that you can send. If anybody knows the nonverbal domestic violence help sign is this. And you just close your fingers up one time, open them up again. You do that two times. And then if somebody knows that nonverbal sign, they'll know that you need help. You don't have to say a word. Again, it's hold up your five fingers, put your thumb inside your hand like you're doing on the Hunger Games, that thing that Katniss Everdeen did, but you're going to close your hands once, open them. Close your hands again, open them. That's the sign for nonverbal domestic violence help. Get and it. Also, do not forget the pizza. Um, if you need to call the police and they're in the room, tell them you're ordering a pizza. All police officers, almost all disasters now know that is the universal sign of help and I can't say anything because they're in a room. Yes. Yes. And then for those that don't know about the suicide hotlines, the number is 1-800-273-8255. If you can't dial that, dial 911. They'll be willing to help you. And that's what any situation even if you're feeling like you're being mentally controlled and you need help, they'll be able to help you. 911 can help you with regardless of whatever you're going through. That's what they're there for. And some people don't feel confident enough to call them, but you need to seek help with whatever you're going on because remember, you are not alone. And say that to yourself, you are not alone. If you don't have yourself, God has you. There's somebody that has your back in this situation whether it be narcissistic behaviors, whether it be manipulation, whether it be sexual abuse, domestic violence, it doesn't matter. They got you. He's got you. And I hate to throw a relation. I, I'm not going to hate. I don't like to throw religion in there. But if you don't have anybody that you trust to talk to, God is always there with you. And he listens and he answers anything that you have questions for. He will send you a message in some shape, form, or fashion to where you know where your next move is. So I'm glad that all of you guys were able to listen to this podcast. We've touched so many topics. I mean, we even threw out numbers in there for help. And I feel like this needed to be put out there because you hardly see any, any podcast that's being made out there for people that really need the help. And just to, to actually tell you the signs of how to look for it, because we never know. We're just human. Um, and I thank Blue for being an awesome guest. I hope I can bring her back on here again for maybe a funny topic this time. We've already knocked out the serious stuff. So now we're going to get you guys to laughing. Get your tissues, blow your nose, open your Bibles, pray, whatever you need to do throughout this podcast, because it has been a tough one. Mm -hmm. um, I want to close in saying that I love you guys. Everybody that's listening to this podcast, Blue, I love you. Thank you so much for joining me. And um, I hope you guys have a blessed and safe year. Please, if you have COVID, I, I just cast it out in Jesus' name. Like, I, I you know, it's it, we have new strands of COVID going on. People that are scared to get the vaccine, I understand do whatever you have to do to keep yourself safe. Wear your mask, wash your hands, all of that stuff to keep your safe. Six feet distancing all the time, even more. Ten feet if you got to. Um, and cover your nose and mouth when you cough. This The basic stuff we already know every day. So just be safe out there, guys. And I hope to hear from you guys soon. I hope you guys can hear from me soon, Lord willing. 
Uh, Blue, do you want to say anything before we close? I want to thank everybody. Um, again, even if you don't, if you don't physically have someone close to you to send help. The information we give you, we gave you tonight, is still help worthy. They are the most non-biased people you can ever have because they don't know this. They deal with this all day, every day. One and two, they won't ask questions. So I want you, I want each and every one of y'all to be safe. First and foremost, I want y'all to be safe. I want y'all to grow, prosper, and leave healthy lives. That's all I got to say, sis. Well, thank you again for listening to this podcast. We love you guys. We hope you have a blessed and safe year, safe day, safe month. And we will talk to you guys soon. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.